Okay, so we're gonna do this part without a camera person, which is why you're looking at me like I'm 100 feet tall. So hopefully you'll be able to see. So now it's been resting for a while. It hasn't been half an hour, but time crunch is happening and I need to get this project done and in the oven so I can do the rest of the day's work. So now my dough has been kneaded. It's been kneaded again. And now it's been let to rest for like 10 minutes or so. So now the gluten strands that were really tight before after kneading I've had a chance to loosen up a little bit and that's what we want. So I'm going to take this out and this is going to make two good sized loaves. So um, if I were to put them not in pans, they would be two 14 inch loaves. But mommy, you just said goodbye to so um, excuse me, try go back out. Try that again. Um, so I'm going to take my bench knife and I'm just going to cut the dough in half. Just going to kind of eyeball it. If I was making a lot of them, I would use my scale to make sure that they were all a pound or so. Um, these ones are a little bigger than that. Okay, so I'm going to take one half of the dough. This is it. Very nice. Okay. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to it out and kind of like rectangle okay so now I have this rectangle shape okay and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the right side and I'm gonna fold it I'm gonna fold it into thirds so I'm gonna take the right side and fold it halfway over and then I'm gonna take the other side and I'm gonna fold it halfway over and I'm gonna push the crease I'm gonna push this down like this. Now the other end, again, I'm gonna pinch it in. So that when I'm done, I have this looks kind of like this long. And the seam, the part that I pinched, is on the top. And this one is gonna go into my bread basket. So the, the ugly part is on the top, right? And then I'm gonna put a little bit of flour around it so that it doesn't stick to my pan of my basket as it gets bigger. So that, that's one. The second one I'm going to put in my stoneware into my stoneware pan, okay? So I'm going to take this second half of the dough, same thing. I didn't need it this time. Once I took it out of the bowl, I just cut it in half, and then I'm going to flatten it out into a rough rectangle. <clears throat> I want to keep some of those bubbles in there, right? I don't want all the bubbles to go away. And then I'm going to take one side, I'm going to fold it a third and push it down and kind of seal that little seam. And this one I'm going to do a little different. I'm going to do the top and just kind of fold it over. And the bottom, hey Katie, and fold that in. And then I'm going to do the up and over. And I'm going to kind of stretch it. I want that outside piece to be nice and snug. I want it to hold its shape when it is rising. I want those outside bands of the of the um, dough to wrap around the um, around the loaf. So this one, no, go ahead. This one, because it's going into a low pan, I'm going to put pretty side up. Okay. And so now this one, because I'm not going to take it out of this pan, this whole one's going in the oven, um, this one goes seam side down. So this one looks like this. Oops. And this one is the opposite. It's upside down. Give them both a little dusting of flour on the top so that as they come up, if they touch my, um, what do you call it? my kitchen towel that's going to go over the top of them so that it doesn't stick. Okay, so those are set. Now I'm going to take my kitchen towel that I showed you before. Any clean, damp kitchen towel will work. Um, you can also use plastic wrap if that's what you got. Okay, and now it's wet. I got it wet with warm water. I wrung it out so it's damp. And I'm just going to lay it over. Um, 
And I'm actually going to put them on a cookie sheet so that I can move them around. So I'm going to use a pan just to hold them. Because for the amount of cooking that I do in the kitchen, there's not a lot of space. So sometimes stuff has to move so that I can do other stuff. So now I have it set here. It's on my sheet. And I'm going to put it back in its warm spot, not too hot. Um, but now my kitchen's squishy because I've had my oven on for a while to get hot. So the kitchen itself is warm now. It's probably 70 degrees in here now as opposed to 50 this morning. And those are going to stay there until they've risen to the top of their pans. So for the one that's going to go in the oven, I want that dough to be right at the top of the stoneware, but not pooped up. Because when it goes in the oven, it's going to poop again. And if it goes too high, it'll roll over. And the one that's in the basket, the same thing. I don't want it so high risen that it comes out of its basket. So I want it to come just to the top. It'll probably, in this kitchen now, probably take an hour. Um, just keep an eye on it. You can tell Jacob, Heather, that he doesn't have to check it every 10 minutes. <laughs> but he can set a timer for half an hour. And then, you know, come back and check it. But he shouldn't jostle it around. Um, and then... That's the next part. If yours rises before I get back, what you want is you want your oven at 450 degrees. Hot. Super, super hot. <clears throat> you want your pans in the middle of the oven. If you have a pizza stone and you want to use it, put that in like 45 minutes before you're going to put your bread in so that it's hot as if you were going to make pizza on it. Then you would put your dough right onto the pizza stone. I like to use a piece of parchment paper so it doesn't stick. Um, if you have cornmeal, you can put cornmeal on it. That works too. Um, and then you put that in the super hot oven. You take some water and you can either put it in a low dish. Like this. You can fill something like this with water and stick it in underneath to put steam into your oven. If you have a spray bottle that has water, when you put it in, you can spray the sides of the oven to make it steam. Don't spray your light bulb, it'll explode. Um, or you can do it without it. The steam in the oven will give you that crispy, chewy crust, almost like a bagel. Um, if you don't do it, it's fine, but that helps get that nice golden brownie, um, exterior and that crisp crust <clears throat> so if you want to put water in, the, in something like this and stick it on the shelf underneath you can I usually my oven has like a little tray at the bottom and so I just take and I throw it in that tray and it steams and it splatters and it it's very loud um, but it puts like five minutes worth of steam in there um, and then you're gonna after like 10 minutes, turn your temperature down to like 400 degrees, right? So you want it super hot when it goes in, super hot and steamy. After about 10 minutes, turn the temperature down. And then it should take probably another 20 minutes after that. Pay attention. Um, it should smell really good. It should be golden brown. Um, if your oven runs hot. You know, you can adjust the temperature. Try not to open the door. If you could just turn the light on and look through the glass, that's better. Um, and you'll know if when you move it off the stone and you tap on the bottom, it sounds hollow. If it sounds kind of thuddy, blah, 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 then it's not done yet. But if you tap it and it, it sounds hollow, take it out, put it on a rack. Don't cut it. <laughs> Bread, when it comes out of the oven, is still baking. So even if the even if it's done in the oven, that steam and that heat that's in the crust is still baking the inside of bread. So I know it's time to take it out and hear it like the crust will be crackly and it smells so good, and you want to rip into it.
let it sit on a rack for 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes. I would say before you eat it. You have to eat it warm. Go ahead, but give it at least 20 minutes to cool. In the rack. If you're cooking it on a, in a pan, so in a, either a metal pan or a glass pan or a stone pan, um, you can ignore all the information about the stone heating up at a time. You can still spray the inside of your oven with water. You can still put a little pan underneath to steam it to put some moisture in the in the um, in the oven. Uh, but the same thing applies. Ten minutes at 450, and then turn the temperature down to 400. Unless you're probably in 20 minutes at that um, at that temperature. Do we have any questions? What do we got? I see Katie, I see Heather, I see Amanda. I feel like I'll remember. Um, somebody forgot their salt today. I was reading one of the posts, and that's totally okay. I've done it myself. I went to market a couple years ago with a whole basket of breads that I forgot the salt. Um, and so I just put a sign on them that said, low salt bread. And people were so excited. Oh, you have low salt bread. I'm like, um, yeah, just put salted butter on it. And it'll taste delicious. It'll still taste good. It'll be good with your soup. It'll be good with your pasta sauce. Um, it's St. Joseph's Day, so I'm making meatballs and um, probably some spaghetti or pasta of some sort. <clears throat> Somebody will have to teach me how to make fresh pasta because I've never done that. So if any of you know how to make fresh pasta and have one of those little roller things, I want some lessons on um, how to make fresh pasta because I can make sauce, I can make meat, but I don't know how to make... Um, fresh pasta and um, that's about it that's um, I'll do probably two more lives one going in the oven and then one coming out um, oh I forgot when you put your bread in the oven you're gonna want a sharp knife so either a bread knife or a straight razor blade if you have one um, a big bread knife works fine because if you don't put some gashes in your bread when it puffs up, it'll split the crust in all kinds of weird places. But if you give a couple strategic cuts, when it puffs, it'll, um, you'll have room for your thing to grow. But I will cover that in the next part. And it'll probably be, what time is it? It's 3 o'clock. It'll probably be an hour. I'm guessing they'll be risen in like an hour and a half. And then by the time they're in and out of the oven, it's probably another 45, 50 minutes. Um... I never bake more than two loaves at a time because then the temperature of the oven gets too low. So if I'm lucky, I can get both of those in at the same time. Um, and I'll show you how I do that with my makeshift peel. I used to have a pizza peel, but it got broken. So now I just use a wooden cutting board um, and some parchment paper to get the, um, get the loaves in. And um, anybody who watches later, if you catch the recording, uh, put questions in the comments, um, or if I take pictures of your own stuff and put in the party, um, I will keep coming back and checking in on everybody. And I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, I hope you're brave enough now to try it. It's, it's fun. Like every time it's different. And, um, there's so many resources online. There's so many different ways. Um, and depending on your lifestyle and how much you need and, you know, it's, it's a great adventure um, to practice. It's an art you practice. I probably bake twice a week with sourdough, and that's a whole other creature in and of itself. Um, but it gives me fabulous bread that I can't buy almost anywhere, um, unless you happen to live out near Boston and go to A&J King Bakers. Um, they have fabulous, fabulous bread. But um, other than that, I don't know where else to get really, really good bread around here. So... Um, I will see you all later, and we will check back in with our finished loaves. Okay, bye.